Okay, I just wanted to show you for my winter abstracts the palette I've set up. It You can see it's pretty cool. There are about four blues. Phthalo blue, Prussian blue, this light lavender blue periwinkle. This is a gray, but it's a bluish gray. And this is a, a called Brilliant Violet by Liquitex. This is magenta, alizarin crimson, cad orange, yellow ochre, Naples yellow, which is an opaque yellow. And I'm deliberately using it for this because it's they're going to be cool paintings. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Black and Payne's Gray. So it's kind of a very subtle, cool palette. I've done double doses of white because I'm going to be using a lot of white. Um, but that will start us off. I'm going to be using these three squares of paper that have been gessoed for a while and I taped them off and as I said I'm planning to do one with uh, gold leaf one with stencil and I forget what the other one was oh well we'll, we'll figure it out but um, they are all three going to be different but all three with very similar palettes I may work on them side by side uh but may get involved with one and just keep on going with that but uh, uh i will i will start if i don't like them i'm gonna stop filming and do some others because i've got some more gessoed watercolor paper to do so the main thing to remember about these are these are play and they are to uh really just be revelations of how you feel about what you're doing and uh, to do them uh, just for the joy of doing them and exploring mark making and doing different things with the, the media. Okay. I'm going to use a, a sketch and wash, which means it's water soluble. Um, instead of charcoal, I could have done charcoal, but it, it does get smudgy. This will activate when I put some water on it, but I've already made some marks, which mean nothing, but, um, they're, they're there. And I'm going to put some more marks on and just let my pencil move. Stay with this one because I think I'll want to work on just the one for the while until I get warmed up myself. I should have done my own warm-ups before this, but anyway, I want to get this film to you as quickly as I can.
this is about doing layers. Um, I am feeling my way around. I haven't got anything specific in mind, but I'm looking uh, at how the marks are going down and starting to think about balance, but haven't got much more than that right now. I'm looking at my edges. They're soft and hard edges so far, but uh, still feeling my way around. It will look nothing like this when I finish. I might even put this aside for a, a little bit and work on one of the others. Just to uh, let this set up and just let my own mind work a little bit. I'm not trying to get a, a specific outcome, but I am just starting to play with different colors, different shapes, and mark making. I'm looking at value. And I might turn it around a little bit just to see what happens. I don't like that red showing up as red. I might mush that down a little bit. It's just fun to play, uh, and of course it's going to look ugly before it looks better, but I don't care. I hope you don't.
Okay, these three are underpaintings, really legitimately underpaintings. I really wish I'd done some warm-ups because I'm I'm uh, not happy with them, but I trust that once I get going, uh, I will be able to pull it out. Um, I'm going to let these dry, and then, as I promised, I, well, one is, I looked it up what I wrote to you. One is a, just a, a plain old kind of winter landscape, and the other one's going to be gold leaf, and the third one's going to have stencil on it. So um, I'll be back. This one is starting to shape up um, the dark lines you see I just used the dropper from my acrylic ink this is actually a Prussian blue ink which kind of lends itself well uh, clearly you can see that I'm kind of developing a center of interest uh, I have been blending because this is still an underpainting I've been blending I need something over here but not big um, that that is called a cantilever um, composition when you have a whole bunch here and just something little over here to balance it a bit. Um, still going to put it aside for now because that's part of the joy of doing abstracts. Something can happen in 15 or 20 minutes or it might take time to look at something and uh, think about it for a while and you'll see that's kind of cool. You'll see that uh, it will develop and, and evolve, and it is perfectly intuitive and perfectly uniquely yours. Okay, because I don't like, I like this piece the least, uh, I'm going to uh, try a stencil on here. Um, one thing about stencils that you might want to think about is you always want to use a similar value to what you've got down there. 
It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the same color, but similar value. And the second thing is, is that you want it to transition from this stuff to the busier stuff. So I, it, 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 on this example, that may work or it may not. Uh, but I don't care because we do this whole thing in layers. I keep saying that. And it's true. I can probably save this piece uh, and make it one of my favorites uh, before this whole thing is over. Right now, I don't love it, uh, but I will. I will continue, and uh, we'll see what happens with this this piece. So I don't even know what I'm going to end up doing here, but I think. It's blue dominant painting, and uh, I've got the subtle yellow ochre. Let's see what happens. I'm using a stiffer brush for this, and I'm trying to just daub it, if that's a word, and not painting sideways because then it can leach through um, and kind of ruin the pattern of the stencil. I like these stencils that are kind of multiple random ones better than ones that show a thing like a bird or a, you know, a flower or whatever. I like these random marks because it will fit with whatever I want it to fit with. And then when I get finished with this, I will probably go in and uh, subtract some of the pieces so it doesn't look like I just laid this stencil on, on the painting and, you know, like a paper cutout, but we'll see. I'm going to try to kind of change it up a little bit, cool some of this down a little bit with this blue, but it's still the same lighter value. What I usually do when I'm finished with a stencil is just throw it into my water bucket. Um, and I never get these fully clean, but if as long as you get enough of the paint off that it doesn't make lumps on the stencil. Um, they retain some color either from the staining of the paint or because you just haven't cleaned it enough. Now I feel like I've done enough. We'll see the great reveal. Ew. Well that's okay. Um, I like it but this whole section is getting a little busier. But what it, the good part about it is that it is similar values. And even if I have to go in and reduce some of this um, when it's all dry, some of these pieces will show through and it will create a very subtle pattern. For that, I'm grateful. I love this. And I like some of this. It's this section, and that's been giving me heartburn anyway. But we'll see it, leave it for the moment. Um, maybe just a little bit. Let's see what happens if I do this. And this is exactly how I think. I don't plan this. But let's see what happens if I do a little bit. I'm going to turn this over and do it on the other side so I don't get all the same colors. Let's try this one with a little bit more blue and the gray. I'm not going to do the whole thing. But this will leave a subtle pattern that I can go in and soften or uh, 
change the focus on. It's just fun to do. It's just going under the heading of exploration and experimentation. And you know, if I don't love this, there will be things that I learn from having d done it, you know? So um, that's where we are. Well, okay. I mean, it gives you a little segue and it's very subtle. And um, I'm sure that some of the pattern will show through once I start making a few more layers on here. But I'm okay with that. We'll put it aside for now. I was ready to dump this whole project and demo a polar bear and a snowman in a snowstorm because uh, I was losing heart. But I do think that it's a great process to go through to do all of this. I do get something out of each one of these things. I find little places that I like. I uh, find little experiments that work or don't work, but I enjoy the process. I think uh, it's it was my reaction that I wanted to do something nice for you. <laughs> I'm laying it on you. But I do like them better now. I have put some more stuff on each one of these. Um, I am, this is uh, the one that I was the least happy with. And right now it's the one I'm most happy with. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do one more thing to it. And uh, for you, I'm going to put some more stencil on it. This one will be the one that I put some gold leaf on. And this one, I just need to develop further. And who knows what I'll do with this. But I, 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 like, I like how it's evolving. I know it's not finished, but I like the feeling of it. And I suggest you too take different mats and go through this process that I'm going through. I do want to finish each of these just so that I can show you that uh, you should have faith in yourself and trust that the outcome will be something that you like. You don't ever have to finish these, but I'm sure you'll get something out of the exercise.
I am going to do a little bit of dry brush here uh, for Marsha. So I, I load my brush somewhat and, you know, it doesn't work every single time. But I've got a little bit of uh, yellow ochre with white on here. And I, I take it and I drag it a little bit on the, the paper towel and then we'll drag it across here. See how that just does that? It's not, my brush isn't really wet. That's why it's called dry brush. I might not keep these in my finished painting, but I wanted to show you, Marcia. Okay. You see that? I'm also redoing a few little areas here that you can see when I drag the brush across that it is not dry brush, but it's transparent over some of the mark making I've done in earlier iterations. And I like that. So you can see down through the layers, if you put sort of a, a, loaded, a loaded brush, but transparent business on top of some of your areas where you've already put color. It's kind of looking really ethereal, I think. It's not it's not very wet, but it is kind of just transparent. Uh, transparent. It's kind of thin washes on some of these areas that I had previously painted. So I'm going to use the marks I used. See that that's dry brush and then a transparent glaze over some of that. And see that's not important to have in my finished product, but it is part of my process of doing these intuitive abstracts um, that I'm looking for stuff I haven't seen before, like Bur uh, Robert Burridge says in his pieces. I'm doing something I've never done before, and I'm kind of liking what's happening. Uh, I'll go back to just doing some more painting in a second. So, that is it for this week. Uh, we'll be doing birch trees next week. So, we'll get back to a semblance of order uh, with those. Uh, I wish you all a good week. And I hope you enjoy your abstracts. Uh, do a little bit to them. Put them aside. Come back to them. Turn them around. Use a mat to just orient yourself with them. Uh, and have a good weekend. Bye for now. So, that is it for this week. Uh, we'll be doing birch trees next week. So, we'll get back to a semblance of order uh, with those. Uh, I wish you all a good week. And I hope you enjoy your abstracts. Uh, 
do a little bit to them, put them aside, come back to them, turn them around, use a mat to just orient yourself with them, uh, and have a good weekend. Bye for now. That is it for this week. Uh, we'll be doing birch trees next week, so we'll get back to a semblance of order uh, with those. Uh, I wish you all a good week, and I hope you enjoy your abstracts. Uh, do a little bit to them, put them aside, come back to them, turn them around, use a mat to just orient yourself with them, uh, and have a good weekend. Bye for now.